All right, guys, so I've had some time to review the live footage from the Proto Z digital unveil last night. I've also had some time to review the video that they uploaded in the middle of that watch party. Um, and I've also had a chance to speak to uh, my local dealer here from Nissan. So there's a lot of really interesting information that I want to share with you guys. So let's talk about the digital unveil last night. A little bit disappointed with the lack of details that we got. I think that's sort of to be expected. Um, I think for the most part, they were really just kind of wanting to showcase the design principles that they had taken in creating the form of this new Z. I think for the most part, they were just trying to give us an idea of what the new Z is gonna look like, both on the outside, as well as give us a hint of what the interior is gonna look like as well. Um, I wanna go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room. That front bumper, I've seen it online, not a lot of people like it. Um, I think the front grille, myself, personally, I think it looks really rectangular. Uh, it's a little bit large, maybe, too. I think the proportions are just really off here on the front. Um, I'm also not so sure about these uh, weird kind of vent shapes that they've put on the sides of the bumper. I'm hoping that they end up doing something with that, and I'm hoping they refine the look of that front bumper. But the rest of the car, I want to say, I think looks fantastic. I'm really glad that they brought back that hood bulge that was from the original 240s, and that we saw, especially with with the introduction of the updated motor for the 350s. I really love that they brought that bulge back. I think it looks really nice. It's a great homage to the original 240 as well. I actually really like the look of the headlights. Some people, not so much. They've said that they're not so sure on the shape here. But personally, I think these new headlights look really nice. So looking at the side profile shot now, this is probably my favorite angle of this car. It just looks so sleek. I like that katana accent piece that they call it uh, there on the roof line. Um, I think it gives it a really nice sharp look. I like the fact that they've integrated that badge back behind the quarter panel window as well. It's a nice homage to the original 240. I am a big fan of the fact that they've also gone and made the door handles flush with the car. It just keeps it looking much sleeker. They don't have that really weird looking kind of flat aluminum color that they had on the original door handles for the 370. I think that looks really good as well. Uh, the front bumper looks better from the side. Obviously, hopefully we'll see some work done here. You'll also find that a lot of the trim there on the bottom, such as the side skirts, that front splitter, um, as well as the rear diffuser that they've got, all of this has been shown here in carbon fiber. So if you don't know already, Nissan has been making some breakthroughs in their manufacturing process for carbon fiber. You should check out the video up here in the top right corner if you want to know more. Uh, but they are trying to get better at producing carbon fiber parts cheaply. And it's interesting to see that they are showing here, at least on this prototype, that they may be integrating some of that carbon fiber into the actual Z. Will we see this when the car is finally released to production? That I'm not so sure about. I think it's in the early stages right now where they're developing that cheaper carbon fiber process. And also talking to a couple of people at the dealership, it sounds like the idea is that the carbon fiber is mostly supposed to be integrated for the GTR. We'll have to see as the design gets finalized and as we get closer to the release date. Um, but it is nice to kind of see that they are looking at integrating some carbon fiber parts as standard in some of the vehicles. Now, we didn't get a whole lot of close-ups of the wheels, but it does seem like they've integrated maybe a six-piston caliper on the front and like a four-piston caliper on the rear. That we have to take with a grain of salt. Obviously, the details here on what they're actually going to be including and on what trims is going to still be up in the air. Um, it is nice to see that they are trying to give this new Z a sporty look, especially with those drilled rotors as well that they were showcasing. But again, what's actually going to be on the production models, not entirely sure yet. Um, but yeah, this side profile shot, I absolutely love this. Um, I think the roof line is a little bit lower. I just think it looks a lot more sleeker and a lot more updated. Um, so really nice there, especially with the lines that we're getting uh, in the side there on the lower part of the car. I think this just looks really nice and updated. Moving back on to the rear now. So there was a lot of mixed reception on these taillights. A lot of people have complained that it makes it look a little bit like a Challenger or even a Ford Mustang. I'm personally a big fan of it, so obviously they took design cues from the 300Z. The whole idea behind the concept artwork for this car was they wanted to model it jointly off the 240 and the 300s while giving it an updated look for the 2020s. And I think they've done a really good job here. And I also really like the fact that they have integrated this sort of 3D LED effect. I think this looks really nice and gives it a really updated look. I'm excited to see these in person because these taillights I think look absolutely amazing, especially with that 3D effect. With the roof and the hatchback, they have gone and painted painted it all in black it looks like. It'll be interesting to see if this design concept continues over to the production models. I do think it gives it an updated look. I'm hoping that they add an option where you can just get the roof also in the body color as well because personally I'm not a big fan of the black. But I do know that a lot of 370Z owners like to wrap their roof as well as their A-pillars in this black. I do think it gives it a nice updated look and it kind of follows some of the other design concepts that they've got with some of their current models. Um, so that's an interesting design direction that they've taken. Obviously we got that giant rear carbon fiber diffuser with the dual exhausts. 
moving along with the unveil footage, we do also get a sneak peek of the interior. I am a bit disappointed to see that it seems like they've integrated the exact same door handles from the 350 and the 370. Um, they've also got some of the same air venting going on. They've even integrated what looks like almost the exact same center console, which is a little bit disappointing, but um, I will talk a little bit later about the fact that it seems like the interior is not 100% finished, so some of these elements might actually change. We've got a fully digital dash display, which gives it a really updated look. I'm gonna be curious to see what we're gonna do with that. If we can have, for instance, a heads up display with the nav actually in that gauge cluster itself. Um, we've also got that infotainment system right there in the center of the car. So curious to see what all the features will end up looking like on this. I am glad to see that they're bringing back the triple gauges for another round. Um, again, the original 240Zs had this, the 350, the 370s had it, and it's nice to see that they're also integrating it on the new Z as well with what looks to be Alcantara there on the gauge cluster as well as potentially on the dash. We didn't really get a great look at the interior though, um, and unfortunately we just didn't get a lot of information in general from last night's showcase. However, if you were keeping watch on Nissan's video uploads, you will have found another introductory video which gives you a lot more information on what's gonna be going in this vehicle. One of the most important things being that it is gonna be getting a twin turbo V6, which obviously means that more than likely we're gonna see the return of the VR30 motor from the Q50s and the Q60s in the new Z. It also means more than likely we're gonna see multiple uh, engine options, namely we'll either get the 300 horsepower tune or the updated 400 horsepower tune with the integrated intercooler like we see with the Infiniti Red Sports. Um, so it's interesting to see that we will probably have multiple engine options for this vehicle. Some people don't like the new VR30 um, because it's a little bit more difficult to work on and the integrated turbochargers uh, make it a little bit difficult for mod support. But I think it was a little bit expected. Uh, Nissan in the past has usually been taking the engine from the Infinities and integrating it into their sports car. Um, so I think pretty much everybody saw this coming. We also get to see a close-up look of the new 19-inch alloy wheels that they're integrating onto this vehicle. Uh, who knows what will actually be included on the base model. I would imagine that the model that they're showing here is probably closer to what maybe a Nismo or a sports model would look like. We get a closer look at the dual exhaust as well with this interesting baffling going on here. I imagine this is probably just part of the sound dampening or maybe we're going to have some sort of active exhaust. Again, no real information here yet on what's going on. We also get a closer look at the cockpit. They have a nice little sort of yellow accent stitching going on with some of these updated seats. Also really like the look of these new seats with that updated headrest as well. If you haven't seen this video already on Nissan's YouTube page, I highly recommend going and checking it out. You just get a much closer look at the interior and the exterior of the new Z, so you can get a little more idea of what it's gonna look like. Um, but I think the most important image to surface up last night, however, was this high definition photo that we got of the interior. Now there is a lot going on here, so let's go ahead and dive in. Now we're gonna go ahead and ignore the outdated bits of the interior, namely the center console as well as the old door handles and vents that were brought out of the 370. From what I've heard, the interior is still not 100% finished. They are going to be updating some of these bits of the interior before the car is actually released. So we will have to see what that finalized look is like in the future. But there are a few Easter eggs kind of scattered throughout this image. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of them. First off, the mileage that's displayed on the digital dash reads 1,969 kilometers. 1969 is when the original 240 40Z was first unveiled. We also see that the estimated distance to empty is 370, just like the 370Z. We also see that the clock reads 240 as in the original 240Z. Now, I don't know if there's any meaning in the song that's currently playing. It's listed as Can't Wait This. I don't know if there's any meaning there, and the song's also paused at 0123. So I don't know if this is another Easter egg. Some people have thought that maybe it might be January of 23, or it might be the 23rd of January next year nobody really knows. I don't know if there's any hidden meaning here. Um, but let's go ahead and look at a couple of the other features. First off, if you look closely at the mirrors, it looks like we may have blind spot detection. It almost looks like there's some sort of LED indicator in that uh, side mirror. Um, who knows? It's difficult to kind of tell. Um, and then obviously we do see that we're going to get backup cameras. In the United States, I believe backup cameras are actually being made standard. So I imagine even in the base models, we're going to see this kind of center infotainment system here uh, with backup cameras being integrated into the vehicle. Let's take a closer look at that triple gauge cluster now. We can see that it looks like they've kept the voltage meter for the alternator. Um, some people don't like this. I'm personally a big fan because it allows you to determine if you've got a bad battery or a bad alternator. So I'm personally glad that they kept that. The one thing I am super excited about is they got rid of the clock. I hated seeing that in the 370. There was no reason to put that in the triple gauge cluster. You could have that in the dash or in the infotainment system. So they got rid of that. Thank you, Nissan. Instead, they've put in place a boost gauge, which appears to read from negative 15 to 20 PSI. More on that here in a little bit. 
Um, it seems that we've also got a boost RPM gauge there. It looks like it reads the speed of the turbo itself. Um, so I'm not entirely sure, it's, it's a bit hazy, but I think it is a boost RPM gauge there in the center. Obviously, this car is going to be a V6 twin turbo, so we're gonna have some sort of boost readings it looks like from the car. Now, if we look at the center dash again, I wanna look at a couple of the values here because we get some hints or some more verification, if you will, that this is gonna be the VR30 motor. The red line is listed at 7K, which is the red line of the VR30. We also see that the boost gauges go all the way up to 20 PSI. Now, I believe in the 300 horse horsepower version the max psi rating is is i think 9 psi and then if you get the red sport it goes all the way up to 15 psi i think this is a good indicator that we are going to be seeing that vr30 motor once again even though it's not 100 percent officially confirmed i think there's pretty much no doubt at this point that we are going to be seeing the return of that engine in the new z with this digital dash, we can see that there's no speedometer currently showing. I think this tells you that the dash itself is probably going to be configurable, or at least there's going to be a couple of different windows to see. Um, I think that's kind of obvious, though. If you're going to have a digital dash, you might as well make it so that you can change out the different information that you can actually see on that display. I'm really hopeful that we'll also get navigation here. Uh, my experience has always been just having the navigation on your stereo or on the tablet or whatever off to the side. It'd be really nice to be able to have that navigation right there in front of me on the dash. Now, the other piece of information I want to share with you guys is I actually went to my local Nissan dealership this morning to talk to them and ensure that I'm on the mailing list so that I'll get notifications when they have a launch date coming up as well as when they start taking pre-orders and I learned some interesting information from the managers there now you'll have to take all this with a grain of salt obviously dealerships don't always tell you what the truth is um, some of this information they claimed is leaked it could still be speculation so take it with a grain of salt but I did hear some interesting bits of information while I was there talking to some of the reps so one of the few things I heard was that the exterior design is supposedly finished as in they're not really going to be making any major edits to it yet um, I'm hoping that's not the case as I said I still want to see them work on that front fascia a little bit more um, but we'll have to see as we get closer to launch date um, they also said that the interior is still being completely overhauled the only thing that they claimed was finished was the dash um, they have said that the doors are still being worked on the center console is still being updated so hopefully we won't be seeing the same door handles returning from the 350 and 370 for instance um, hopefully we'll see a little bit more updates to the rest of the interior I was told that the weight of the car is supposed to be less than the 370 model. This makes some sense because they are replacing a lot of parts in the car with aluminum. They've been pushing to try and get rid of steel. Whether everything's gonna be made out of aluminum or not is, is tough to say, uh, but we're gonna have to see as we get closer to launch date. And with the VR30 motor being heavier than the VQ, I would expect that this car is probably gonna weigh about the same, but again, we'll have to see as we get closer to launch date. Um, I was also told that the center of gravity is lower than the 370. This makes sense because it does seem like we do have a slightly lower roof line on the newer car. So a center of gravity being lower, I think is to be expected. Another exciting piece of information that I heard is that there will be a Nismo version that's supposed to have over 400 horsepower. So I imagine what's gonna happen is we are gonna see for the base models, they're gonna get the VR30 motor with the 300 horsepower tune. And then we'll see the Nismo and possibly a sports model uh, with the tuned up version of the VR30 with an integrated intercooler um, that has over 400 horsepower. So it's exciting to see that they are returning a Nismo back potentially. Um, also, in terms of price ranges, supposedly the base models will start at about 35 to 40K, with the Nismo model being over 50 grand. Um, so I think that price point is about what we expected as well. Um, I think the newer Z was expected to be a little bit more expensive than the current 370s, but it seems like Nissan is still trying to stick to a, a fairly reasonable price for their base model cars. And then the last couple of bits of information that I was told, the first 800 models are supposed to ship straight to the US. The US is Nissan's biggest market for the Z car with over 50% of the models selling within the US itself. Um, so they are trying to ship the first models over to the US and all 800 of those models are supposed to be manual. And then probably the most exciting piece of information, Nissan's ambitious goal sounds like they're trying to push cars out by the end of Q2 of next year. I don't think that's going to happen. I suspect we won't see this car until closer to the end of 2021 or early 2022. Reason being, if you guys actually go back and read the Q1 reports from this year as well as the stock and shareholders meeting, they are wanting to push out newer models within the next 18 months. So I think an 18 month time frame is probably a little bit more realistic for this new Z. But again, we'll have to see as we get more news moving forward. So that is all that I have to share for you guys. Again, just be careful. A lot of this is still a bit speculation. Um, we're really gonna have to see as we get closer to launch date what the final form of the Z is gonna look like. 
Um, I am super excited for the launch party at my local dealership. Again, there's no expected date for this yet, but I will be planning on attending to see the new Z in person. And I'd really like to put my name down for a pre-order. I am not 100% set yet on if I'm gonna get this new car. But if I do, I want to get it on launch. I'd really love to be one of the first people in my area to receive one of these. I'm super excited about the car. The only thing that I am not 100% sold on is that front bumper. Hopefully we see some mod support to fix that, or uh, hopefully Nissan themselves will fix it before it actually gets released to the public. Um, if I do get one of these Zs, I'll probably do something like a base model. I really don't think that I need the 400 horsepower tune. The 370 is already getting the supercharger and everything put in it. That's going to be my high horsepower vehicle for the track. If I get the new Z, I think it's going to be more for just daily driving. Um, but yeah, super excited for this car. I really want to get my name on the pre-order list. I'm going to wait so that we can get some idea of what the pricing is going to be and the expected launch date and all that. And I got to figure out where I'm sitting financially. But I would be really elated to be able to own one of these cars. In case some of you are wondering, obviously I've been in the Sentra today instead of my 370Z, and that's because the 370Z is currently broke down. Um, it's sitting in my garage right now. Uh, I'm having an issue with the fuel pumps. They weren't priming a couple of days ago. Um, I think there was a loose connection in the relay slash fuse box that I have. So I need to go and inspect that. So in the next video, which I will probably start filming maybe this weekend, um, I need to go and try and inspect what's going on there. Uh, hopefully it should be a pretty quick fix. After that, I'll be doing a video on flashing ROMs as well as data logging for you guys. Hopefully at that point we'll have an idea of what's going on with the blow-off valve and then we can actually start installing the supercharger kit. So um, I want to thank you guys for your patience and waiting for that build video to go up. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos and I'll see y'all in the next one. Later.